Merry Christmas, everybody. We're going to get our time started today with the Canadian Family of Churches Christmas Eve virtual service with some songs, all Canadian content. Welcome to our time. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Mark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald. Hark the herald. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald. Hark the herald. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy love God and sinners reconciled And the voice of the very rich all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the sky With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Hark the herald, hark the herald, hark the herald angels sing. Oh, oh, oh.
Hi there, welcome to the All Canadian Christmas Eve service. My name's Tim, this is my wife Anna, this is our daughter Violet, and we're the Petters from Winnipeg. Yeah, so as we kind of bring the Christmas season to a close, as Christmas Day is tomorrow, I like to remember all the things that I love about Christmas. I love um, buying gifts for people, I love baking with family, I love putting up the Christmas tree and decorating it, I love uh, the Christmas music. I know some people don't enjoy the Christmas music, but I love the Christmas music. Um, yeah, and I love the small moments of family, and I also love the moments where I can just sit and reflect on what the holiday is really about, what we're actually celebrating, and that's Jesus being born and coming into the world and living a human life. And um, I'm reminded of Matthew 1 verse 23, where it says, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And I just love to think about that God is with us. That is what he came here for. He came to be with us and that we could be with him. Um, and so it's just a wonderful reminder for me and, and all that we do throughout the Christmas season and um, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Yeah, and, and when I think about what's important for our family as we go about all these exciting things where we're doing the, the shopping and the wrapping and the baking, and remembering that God is with us. God's with us when we're doing that last minute shopping. He's with us when we're staying up late wrapping gifts. He's with us when we're opening those gifts on Christmas with our families. He's with us when we're having uh, family over for dinner. He's with us as we bake and uh, and as we spend time together. So. Uh, I, I hope that you enjoy the service today, remembering that God is with us even as we worship this morning. So uh, we're going to go ahead and pray for our service now. Merry Christmas from Montreal, Canada. Joyeux Noël à tous. Prions ensemble. Seigneur Dieu tout puissant, nous sommes à la fin d'une année qui a été pour beaucoup tumultueuse et uh, très défiante. Mais nous prenons ce temps en tant que chrétien à travers le Canada pour te remercier pour ta grâce et pour ta miséricorde. Nous célébrons la naissance de Jésus qui est le don de l'amour, de l'espoir, de la joie et de la paix. Nous te prions éternel pour ceux et celles à travers le monde qui souffrent. Nous te prions pour les victimes de la guerre en Ukraine ceux qui font face au froid, aux intempéries, au manque d'électricité et de nourriture et d'eau potable. Que ta grâce soit avec eux. Réconforte-les. Procure-leur tout ce dont ils ont besoin et viens à leur secours. Nous te prions également pour nos frères et sœurs et leurs familles en Haïti qui souffrent la faim, qui sont dans une situation des plus terrifiantes. Que ta grâce soit avec eux. Accompagne-les éternel. Procure-leur également tout ce dont ils ont besoin. Nous te prions finalement pour tous nos frères et sœurs au Canada. Donne-leur la foi, donne-leur la joie, remplis-les de ta paix. Béni soit ton Saint-Nom, à toi soit l'honneur et la gloire pour les siècles des siècles. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you that we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus, who gives us so much hope. Thank you that you thought of us before we were even on the earth. Father, I pray that we can celebrate. I pray, Father, that you could be with those of us that this time of year can be very difficult mm -hmm. because of the loved ones that we've lost or different situations. Please be with uh, those in war-torn countries. Mm -hmm. Protect them, Father God. Be with them. Father, I pray for those in, in Haiti who are having challenging times. Be with them, Father God. Protect them. I pray, Father, for across Canada that you will help us to have the joy of celebrating, the joy of being together, yes, the Father. joy of the salvation that Jesus provided and that has set us free. Thank you for your love. Thank you for this opportunity. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Que Dieu vous bénisse tous et toutes, ainsi que vos familles. Amen. Elizabeth! What is it, child? 
is moving. Mine too. Try this back, and if you will find me the a baby boy would give sight to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hands? Did you know that your baby boy will walk where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you
gift of murder to honor thy sacrifice. Hi, Merry Christmas, everybody. My name is David Jung. I'm Erica Jung. And we're from the Winnipeg Church of Christ. We want to be able to get a chance to share some thoughts around communion. As we know that God sacrificed his son for him to die on the cross for us, but he had to be born for that to happen as well. And so at Christmas, we remember the sacrifice of Jesus and God and what that meant for us and how it impacted our lives. I want to ask uh, my wife to be able to share some things that happened to us and our family, especially Gabriel when he was in Korea. And so, Erica? So the last weekend in October, on a Saturday morning around 11 a.m., we received a phone call from our son, Gabriel, who lives in Korea. And the first things he said were, don't worry, I'm safe. <laughs> and we thought, okay, great, we're glad you're safe, but obviously something must have happened. And so he proceeded to share with us how he had been in Itaewon, which is an area in Seoul, Korea. They had had some Halloween activities going on there and a bunch of people were going, some disciples, he and his girlfriend. And while there, uh, while they were there, uh, something happened and basically there were too many people. Some people called it a stampede, some people called it a crowd surge, but there were too many people and people got crushed and pe people were killed. 158 people, I believe, were killed, mainly young people uh, that night. And so by the time we got off the phone with Gabriel, he actually, uh, it had hit international news and it was everywhere. And when Gabriel shared with us, we were so grateful that he was safe physically. Uh, he was banged up a little bit. His arm was bruised, I think, uh, banged up from... Uh, holding on to his girlfriend so she wouldn't drown in the crowd or get lost or trampled on but as well I think his arm he was just hitting people and so he was physically safe and so uh, that was wonderful but certainly for the days and maybe a few weeks after he there was a lot of uh emotional things I think that he felt and so he was working through those things it was a traumatic event for everybody who attended but for Gabriel unlike all his previous life he'd never seen or experienced anything like that he'd never really seen dead bodies on a street and I don't think he'd ever been in personal danger that way before uh any threat to his life anything like that and so it was a very new experience and so for for me as a parent I was really grateful that he was safe physically but we definitely were praying a lot and talking to him a lot because we were concerned about his uh emotional and spiritual well-being as well so those were the things that were most pressing on our hearts and that we were dealing with as a family for the days and the weeks following that incident in Itaewon. Thank you. And certainly, as Erica shared, it was very traumatic for us as well. I mean, after COVID graduation, uh, both of our sons, that they wanted to go and learn Korean. And so Gabriel did go there. And that's the last thing when we sent him off from the airport here from Winnipeg to think that he would be involved in something like that, where his life was literally in danger. And hundreds of people, uh, well, actually, they, they thought they had 100,000 people there. And if we knew that's where he wanted to go hang out with some of the ministry, that's we would definitely say, no, don't do that. But we didn't know. And certainly we trusted his instinct. We trusted the Lord to protect him. But, you know, even under the Lord's protection, disciples still die. And so when he was there and he called us, we were just just beside ourselves with fear and trepidation. We're at the point we got emotional. And I just try to relate this to us where even the days afterwards, you know, I was using some of the abilities that I learned in school about counseling to help him deal with some of the trauma. And he's doing great now. His girlfriend's doing great, the sister there. But really holding on to her was something that he was thinking about, you know, saving her. I don't know what would have happened if he would have let go. We don't know what would have happened if, you know, he was just a few meters one way or the other, because uh, 158 people lost their lives. 
And so as we share in communion today, we start thinking about God. And I don't know what kind of conversation he would have had with Jesus in his spirit form before he came down as a human being into a, a baby. And to have God deity to dwell inside a man that was a baby, relying on a shepherd's to kind of be there when he was born, relying on a carpenter and, and a teenage mom, um, you know, that God chose Mary and Joseph to take care of them. They weren't ninja warriors. They weren't CIA agents. They weren't really, I mean, they just had their skills and they didn't have a place to sleep. And I can't imagine God knowing all of this beforehand and letting his son come into the world. And if somebody would have tell us that that's what would have happened to our son, leaving not just physical damage, but emotional damage for many years, perhaps a lifetime, that's something you just leave that wound in there, we would have said, no way. And as a parent, there are things that you learn to appreciate, especially when your kids get into danger. And, and can you imagine willingly doing that, purposely doing that, so that you can save a bunch of people that literally will not care most will not care most will not respond christmas is just another day where people get some time off and of course even many christians have commercialized christmas and it has nothing to do with jesus anymore and so as we think about the scriptures what it said about jesus knowing this beforehand god knowing this beforehand we find this in john chapter 1 verse 10. the bible is referring to jesus he was in the world and though the world was made through him the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor a husband's will, but born of God. And when I think of this passage, it just gets us to think, can you imagine purposely allowing your son to go to a place where he'll be rejected, people will not know him, and, and, and they will actually kill him eventually. And thinking through that it would begin at his birth, we would have never let him go. And just thinking about God's love for us, that's what motivated him to let him go so that we could have an opportunity at salvation. Mm -hmm. As we remember this time of communion during this Christmas time of remembering Jesus' birth, his birth led to his sacrifice, and his sacrifice led to an opportunity for us to respond. And as parents, we would never let our children do this, but God did because the main reason is because he loved his other children, which is us. And it's so great to have a God that loves us this much, and a Jesus who knew this beforehand was willing to sacrifice for us. So as we keep this in our hearts and our minds, you know, may we have a Merry Christmas just remembering what God did for us, remembering what Jesus did for us, and to respond in kind as people, to be willing to risk to save others. And sometimes it means risking reputation, risking some uncomfortable conversations, at least in this country, and some other brothers and sisters around the world, they risk death by sharing the love of Jesus. I pray that we can respond remembering Jesus' death by sharing about the life that he offers us. Let's bow and pray at this time. Father, we thank you so much for this time we can come before you as a family, as as people who have been redeemed. I pray, Father, for those who have not yet heard the message, for those who are getting an understanding of the message of Jesus Christ's birth and his death and his burial and resurrection. I know, Father, that uh, you have a plan for us. I pray that we can respond. And as we take in communion, remember the body and the blood that was shed on the cross for us. And to remember, Father, during this time of Christmas, that he was born for such a purpose to save us all. Thank you once again. It's through Jesus we pray. Amen. Starlight shine, the night is still. Shepherds watching from a hill. I close my eyes. 
Hello! And greetings from the nation's capital here in Ottawa. What a time of the year it is where we reflect on the birth of Jesus Christ. You know, one of the most amazing scriptures that I find that I love to read in this season where we celebrate the birth of Christ is actually found in Luke chapter 2. And um, I'll go ahead and read a section on Melanie Will. And then we want to share what the birth of Christ means to us as we reflect on this amazing time. It says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to, all, to, to those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has to, had told us about. You know, uh, Melly is gonna share a couple of minutes in, in uh, what really the birth of Christ means to her, and then I'll close this out. So babe, why don't you go ahead and share what Chris, what uh, the birth of Christ means to you. Awesome. Um, yeah, the birth of Christ for me, it is it is hope. Um, you mm. know, I think, whenever I think of Christ, I think of June 8th, 1989, and that was the day I was baptized into Christ and made Jesus the Lord of my life. And um, what a hopeful day that was for me. I looked forward with a great deal of hope 
for what God would do in my life. And in, in the last 33 years, it's been quite a ride. But without the birth of Jesus, we would not have had his life that mm. I personally would not be able to follow. And we certainly would not have had his death and his burial and his resurrection. Because through that, I have this new hope and this new life. Um, and ultimately wait and expectation for the ultimate hope of being with God for eternity in heaven. So it's hope for me. You know, uh, the birth of Christ as the world celebrates, and we certainly use this as an opportunity to talk about the reason for the season, so to speak. What this time does is it's a couple things for me. It causes me to reflect. It slows me down. And it, 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 it helps me to calibrate what is really important in life. What are the things that really solidifies who I am, what I believe, what gives me joy in my life? You know, I'm ashamed to say that when I was a younger person, Christmas meant, and the birth of Christ meant for me, a time of getting gifts. Presents, yeah. <laughs> and when I didn't get what I wanted to, at least, when I wrote to Santa and he didn't give it to me, <laughs> I was upset. And yet when I think about the birth of Christ today, and when I really think about it, it's a time where we pause, mm. we slow down. I don't get caught up in the rat race of the commercialism of Christianity, where gift giving is a big thing. And of course I believe in giving gifts, but that's not what it's all about. It's a time of reflection and to pause. And I love that it's the end of the year so yeah. that you can actually think about how the past year was and what the next year is going to be. Yeah. And I think another thing that it does as well, it actually, it makes you feel incredibly joyful. Mm -hmm. You know, when Jesus was prophesied about in the book of Isaiah, it says, when there was darkness, when there was gloom, a light dawned. Mm -hmm. And this joy burst forth. And I love the fact what the scripture says is that there was almost a spontaneous rejoicing mm. in heaven when this Christ right. was born. And we pray that as we celebrate the birth of Christ, that it's a time of great hope. Yeah. And it's a time of hope realized not only in Christ being born, but that he died for us. And mm -hmm. ultimately, that produces great joy in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so from here in Ottawa, where today actually it snowed for the first <laughs> time, we wanna say from the bottom of our hearts, we wish, wish you, you a, a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. And may God bless you over these holidays. Be safe. Hello, my name is Greg Taylor and I get to serve in a volunteer capacity as the country director for Hope Worldwide Canada. Bonjour, je m'appelle Anne-Marie Racine et je suis bénévole pour Hope Worldwide Canada à Montréal. On behalf of Hope Worldwide Canada, we want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. De la part de Hope Worldwide Canada, nous voulons tous vous souhaiter un très joyeux Noël. As we close out the year that was 2022, we want to take this time to express our gratitude to all of our volunteers and supporters from coast to coast. Alors que nous terminons l'année 2022, nous voulons à, à tous vous exprimer la reconnaissance aux bénévoles, à tous ceux qui nous ont soutenus uh, dans, la, dans notre cause. And I know at this time of year you're going to be doing a of the holiday uh, activities, serving your communities from backpacks to toy drives to caroling at seniors homes to food drives and pantry drives and serving and shining in so many different ways and what a great way to be a part of such a very special time of year in our communities. Nous savons que en cette période des fêtes, vous êtes en train de préparer des activités euh, pour les fêtes pour pouvoir aider que ce soit des dons euh, au niveau des, des, euh, des jouets, euh, des cadeaux, les chorales, euh, d'encourager de, les aînés, 
euh, de pouvoir euh, euh, faire ça, de, tout, toutes sortes d'activités euh, en ce temps des fêtes et, et vraiment, c'est vraiment une bonne euh, opportunité justement pour pouvoir donner et pour servir. Je veux aussi remercier vous spécialement pour votre support de la situation de la crise en Ukraine et en Haïti maintenant. Nous sommes vraiment reconnaissants pour votre soutien euh, pour euh, les crises qui sont en train de se passer en ce moment en Haïti et en Ukraine. And at this time of year, I want to give a special shout out to one of our newest chapters, Quebec City, who is in right now packaging and sending Christmas gifts and school supplies for 120 children in our sister church in Odessa, Ukraine. We're grateful for their tremendous example at this time of year. Nous voulons uh, tout particulièrement souligner les efforts de un de nos nouveaux chapitres, uh, donc le chapitre de la ville de Québec, qui sont en train de préparer des, des sacs d'école et des paniers uh, de Noël, des cadeaux de Noël, uh, à peu près comme 120 uh, de paniers qui vont être envoyés uh, à Odessa. Uh, C'est une ville uh, de une de nos, nos églises en Ukraine. This Christmas, our awesome God gave us the desire to do something special for the children of Ukraine suffering the hardship through the war. So we did a partnership with a community organization and we assembled 55 backpacks of toys, school supplies and clothes and sent them to the children of our sister church in Odessa, Ukraine. We had the privilege to share with women that were forced to flee the war in Ukraine and leave behind their husband and their country. One of them told us her history, expressing her gratitude to Canada and how she keeps her hope of returning to her home one day. They cooked Ukrainian food and showed us a video from their country. Her history touched us, people were moving to help them. We are so grateful for this opportunity to serve our God so that we all witness his great power and love. Bye! Merry Christmas with love! And we're continuing to collect donations for both of these causes. And so if you're interested, please head on over to our website and uh, check us out for that. And we're grateful for your support. Nous continuons à ramasser des dons pour uh, ces causes. Et uh, vous pouvez consulter donc uh, le lien internet HOPE www.c.org In English, you can consult the link hopewwc.org You know, as we gather with friends and family to celebrate Christmas this season, we ask you to continue to pray for peace on earth. With the war in Ukraine and the humanitarian crisis in Haiti, the most powerful thing we can do is bring this all To God. Lorsque nous nous rassemblons pendant cette période des fêtes avec notre famille et nos amis, euh, nous vous demandons de prier pour la paix sur la terre. Et dans, dans un moment comme ça de guerre en Ukraine et de crise humanitaire en Haïti, le, la chose la plus puissante que nous pouvons faire, c'est d'amener cela à Dieu. And as we look forward to the new year, we're excited about what the future holds for us. As together we celebrate the 30th anniversary of Hope Worldwide Canada as a registered nonprofit in Canada. And it's going to be a tremendous year of celebrating and we look forward to that. Et nous avons très hâte à cette nouvelle année qui s'en vient, l'année 2023. Et nous sommes excités uh, alors que nous célébrons le 30e anniversaire de Hope Worldwide Canada, enregistré comme un organisme de bienfaisance depuis 30 ans. Et euh, nous euh, savons et nous avons vraiment hâte en une année qui va être incroyable. So again, on behalf of Hope Worldwide Canada, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Donc à nouveau, euh, de la part de Hope Worldwide Canada, nous vous souhaitons tous un joyeux Noël et une très bonne année. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, Christine, you're here too.
you. I love you. I know. Dad, what's happening? Honey, the power works. It's coming. It goes on and off. Whatever we want. <laughs> We've got clean water. Oh, that's great. Look at that. Ooh. I bet I know what this does. Bring down the glorious water. Ah, shoes. Oh, what do we got here, guys? Food. Mm, I love food. What? A food? A food? Do you not have work? This is awesome. Look, listen here. These? The what? Jack, be careful. Oh, I have a car. Did you guys see this? Yeah, you have a car. Oh a car! <laughs> and don't forget your coffee. You're the best. Merry Christmas, everyone! It's so good to be able to celebrate this Christmas Eve with you and the Canadian families and churches across the great nation of Canada. It is so good to see you, boys and girls, it's so good to see you as well. I just want to welcome you, all of you from Vancouver to Calgary to Edmonton, Winnipeg, Hamilton, Ottawa, Halifax, and, and Vutus Osea, Montreal! In Quebec, uh, Quebec City, I, I should call vous êtes ici also. It is so good to be with you. <laughs> I'm just sitting here on Christmas Eve. I'm preparing my gifts. The elves are preparing their gifts. And I've got my naughty and nice list. <laughs> so I hope you've been good this Christmas. This whole year, you're all, I hope your written names are written in my nice list. It is so good. <laughs> I can't wait to be in your houses. I can't wait to have the cookies and the milk that you open up for me. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I just want to remind you all of what special time this is for Christmas. Do you guys know what the spirit of Christmas really is? If your names are written in my nice list, you do. The spirit of Christmas is the spirit to receive. Yes, you're going to receive good gifts. That's great. There's going to be gifts under the Christmas tree. But it's having a spirit to receive with thanksgiving. Because God gave us the most incredible gift when he gave his son Jesus for us. <laughs> what an incredible gift that was. We just need to receive that with a good attitude with all that we get in life let's have a great attitude and say thank you whether it's to mom and dad for the gifts whether it's to god for our lives and whether is it whether it's for the weather whether it's for whatever we have in life let's just be grateful and receive it with a good heart merry christmas boys and girls lean on in and tell me merry christmas yeah, yeah, Merry Christmas! <laughs> Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night! Thank you so much, Santa, and thank you for everybody for joining us uh, um, today for uh, this Christmas Eve time. Uh, thank you so much also for all those who participated in uh, preparing material for this as well. So Merry Christmas, everybody. We hope you have a safe time, a great time with family, but also remembering the amazing gift that God has given us. Uh, this is the official close of our time together, but we do have some songs uh, submitted by the various churches for children's choirs. So you are free to stay with us to be able to enjoy some of that. So once again, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year if I don't see you between now and that time. And may God bless you and all that you love and all the people that uh, are around you um, um, this season. You take care and here's some uh, children's choir material for you to enjoy.
On the first day of Christmas, won't you listen to me? A partridge in a pear tree. The second day is Christmas, my jewels send them me. The fourth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me four calling birds, three French hens, two turkey cocks, and a partridge in a pear tree. The tree. The sixth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. But she thinks five golden legs, two her three French hens, two turtle doves, and, and a partridge in a bear tree. Sixth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. Six geese a wing, five golden rings. Four calling birds, three friends, and two turtle doves, and a partridge in a tree. On the eighth day of Christmas, my children came to me. Christmas, my true love sent to me. Twelve drummers drumming, drivers piping to play, and lords of leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids of milking, seven songs. Five golden <laughs> three French hens, <laughs> and, and a partridge in a pear tree. tree. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me twelve drummers drumming, eleven pipers piping, ten lords were leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids in milking, seven times swimming, six geese a lay, Merry Christmas, my 
Joy!